Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus and his disciples set out for the villages of Caesarea Philippi. Along the way, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that I am? They said in reply, John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others one of the prophets. And he asked them, But who do you say that I am? Peter said to him in reply, You are the Christ. Then he warned them not to tell anyone about him. He began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer greatly and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed and rise after three days. He spoke this openly. Then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. At this he turned around and, looking at his disciples, rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan. You are thinking not as God does, but as human beings do. The Gospel of the Lord. Yeah, if we remember uh, what happened yesterday in the, in the Gospel, we might, we might hear or see uh, certain parallels. So we had the uh, healing of a blind man, Jesus uh, laying his hands on this man and, uh, and making him to see. And the, you know, the at first touch, he sees uh, people, as he describes, looking like trees and walking around, and only at the second touch is able to see what, what is. Uh, there's, there's some of the same going on here. If you want to take the first part of the passage we have today and, par- and make that, um, allow yourself to see the parallels there, or allow it to work uh, down into the rest of the passage as well. Uh, you know, this is um, what, what the crowds, who the crowds think Jesus is, John the Baptist, others Elijah. I mean, this is a, this is a strong image of Jesus. Yeah, this is, um, it's not exactly Jesus from afar, right? These people are not exactly distant from him. But to, uh, but to pick him out as John the Baptist, Elijah, one of the prophets, right? This is, this is a powerful voice. This is Jesus uh, as God's mouthpiece. Yeah, he's, he, in this sense, he's, he's speaking words that are intended to bring God's rule to that place. And, and his rule uh, demands the, the uprooting of injustice, the confrontation of injustice. And Jesus is doing that, Jesus is doing that work. Um, it's a very different image, I think, sometimes to the one that, that we have of Jesus, right? If, someone, if we were to say from, from our little congregation here, our little crowd, you know, who, who does Jesus look like to us? Um, we, we might come up with something very different. I don't know what we'd come up with, but we, I think we'd come up with something very different. But this is what the crowds think of Jesus. He, I mean, to say he's, he's God's mouthpiece, it's a very, it's a very strong uh, kind of declaration on on their part, or at least what the, what the disciples um, anticipate uh, them saying about Jesus. But, yeah, who do you say that I am, right? His, his closest associates, right? So is, is, the first one, is the first one the parallel right there? They can see Jesus. He's like a tree walking around. He looks like God's prophet. And then at another touch, right, it, Jesus' Jesus's closest associates, uh, they're able to see him as he is. I think that's the that's probably the original parallel, and and they say quite clearly, right? Saint Peter says quite clearly, "You're the Christ." So it's not simply that you are God's mouthpiece; you're His Messiah. You're the King, and when the and when Jesus's movement changes from say more broadly his his preaching, the kingdom of God movement, to a Messiah movement, now we have kings doing battle for thrones. Of course, they're not. Yeah, you know, they're not all uh, competing for the same thrones, but it doesn't mean that the imposters won't take the real guy really seriously and try to kill him. Of course they do, and that's, and that's where we end up. Uh, but this is, but, and and Jesus, is, Jesus is even giving his disciples that. You know, this is, we're, go, we're going off to achieve the new exodus. We're going off to inaugurate God's kingdom. And the way that it's going to be inaugurated is by my suffering and death. It, and even here, he's, he's more gentle than, than that, right? It's not, a, it's, not a, it's not a direct, it's not as direct a statement as we might expect. He's starting to use son of man imagery. 
the son of man imagery, the one who, who will suffer and be vindicated by God and then exercise God's authority and power. So, but he's, he's shaping their imaginations for what, for the task that he has come to take on and for the, and for the way that he is going to go. And of course, St. Peter, who just, you know, two seconds before is, you know, he's Johnny on the spot, you know, I mean, he's right, he's right there with the right answer. Uh, he, he's the one who's being called Satan. I mean, it's, a, it's, it's one of the quickest turnarounds in all of literature, I think. I mean, it's, 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 uh, it's befuddling, um, except for the fact that we, we, understand our, we understand ourselves, our hearts, our lives are in need of a rewrite in, in much the same way as St. Peter. That even, even f- so even for us, claiming Jesus as the Christ, claiming Jesus as the King, how often are we uh, pulling back on that own uh, declaration of faith on our part? How often are we saying, okay, yeah, you're, you know, you're the king, but just allow me to be self-ruled for a minute or two. You know, I want to, I want to do this or that or the other. I'm not, gonna, I'm not really going to look to you to do this. Or, even, even more, even closer, I think, I know, Jesus, the way that you are going here, and I know the way that you want me to go here, but I think, we, I think I can stand to go a different way. Like, I know, Lord, that you, that you are going the way of my little summation, the way of self-gift, the way that best glorifies God and is an outpouring of myself in God's service. I know that that's the way you are calling me to go at every step. But you know what? I think it seems too costly here, and I'd rather not pay the price. And you say, okay, well, this is, this is a direct challenge to the rule of Christ Jesus. So Jesus is going, he's, like, he's not saying like, I'm going to go and fight, I'm going to go and fight this battle, and there's a decent chance that I might die. No, like, the, the death is a big part of it. It's like, that's how I'm going to accomplish the inauguration of the kingdom. It's not a, it's not a messy accident in this sense. This is what I intend to do. And Peter is there to say, there's got to be a different way. And if we look back uh, into the temptation in the wilderness, this is exactly the kind of temptations that the, the devil throws in Jesus' face. So th- to pull him not only off of his mission, but out of his identity. But because he is God's beloved son, he can go the way of self-gift, even if it costs him everything. And it's not even if it costs him everything. He's going to go the way of self-gift all the way to death. And going the way of self-gift all the way to death he makes his way through death and comes out the other side. Then he gives us the power to follow him on that way. But that means that we have to, if we get anything from this passage, it's to embrace Jesus as our king, to to honor and acknowledge him as our king, to embrace him as, as our king, and to follow him in the way that he goes. And if we don't know the way that he goes, then we can ask him as we make our way through our day. Lord, what best honors and glorifies you? And how do I best pour myself out here in your service? And if we keep asking those questions and we're, and we're docile to where he's leading us, then we too will go the way of self-gift. We too, here and now, will be uh, conquering death by the love of God made flesh.